For over 65 years, Sydney's orchestras have provided the entertainment for diplomatic, corporate, and social functions in and around the nation's capital. You have come to the people who have provided music for virtually every inaugural ball since Herbert Hoover. Through the years, one president after the other after the other danced to the music of Sydney's orchestras. You've come to the people who've performed at functions for many of the nation's largest and most demanding corporations. You've come to the people that association people turn to for music at their trade shows, conventions, and gala events. And you have come to the people that have made so many charity and social occasions evenings to remember for everyone in attendance. In 1926, uh, management asked my dad to open a music contracting office at the Mayflower, and he was delighted to do that. It was named Society Music Incorporated. Every executive in the hotel owned a piece of the action. My dad ultimately bought them all out, renamed it Sydney's Orchestras, and 67 years later, here we are. By 1930, Sydney's Orchestras was featured on a weekly radio program on WRC and the future chairman of the board was starting to make the news. The war years have a distinct place in the musical history of our nation, and so too in the music of Sydney's orchestras. The orchestra evolved from an ensemble playing light classical and dance music to one of Washington's most popular big bands. That era and the music of the next 20 years remains an important part of the Sydney's repertoire today. Today's Sydney's orchestras still do a wonderful job playing for an afternoon society tea. Some of today's music, though, may be a little too hot for that audience. From 1926 to today, Sydney's orchestras have kept audiences entertained. Please allow us to add your guests to our illustrious audience history. And please allow us to add your name to our distinguished client list. Thank you and good night. Enjoy your stay in Washington.